good afternoon everyone and a warm welcome to another edition of Friendlier. From the core members, eh, Anne, Lynn, Karen and myself, we hope you're all well and looking forward to the show. I know we are. And our theme for this week is Life is what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. And there's certainly been a lot of changes in their life in this past six months. Eh, everything is different, isn't it? Every single thing, how we shop, our hobbies, our working life and holidays, they've all changed dramatically. And just as we thought that there was light, some light at the end of the tunnel, bang, Glasgow is in lockdown again. So we have to be very careful, we have to be vigilant and do everything we can to ensure our safety. And our quote for this week is, it's life folks but not as we know it. And we can certainly identify with that. Some people say that quote comes from Star Trek, but others dispute that. But we don't care. It's our quote. It's life, folks, but not as we know it. But we really just have to go on with it, don't we? I met a woman who uh, goes to the same church as me, a friend, uh, the other day, and she was out walking. Uh, she has done every day since lockdown. Every single day, this woman puts on her coat, rain, hail or shine, and she does 10,000 steps. Now that's to be admired, isn't it? She hasn't let the lockdown or the virus get on top of her. She has gone out, got her exercise every single day. Now, that is to be admired. And it tells us that the happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything they have. And that's what we should be trying to do. And it also tells us once you know what direction to take, finding the path to do it becomes easy. Well, we've got a great show for you today. We've got a young lady who's been on before, Katie Palmer, and we have a young gentleman, Colin, who has not been on before, who's going to play some piano for us. And we have got all the usual suspects with their particular slot. So let's go on with the show. Next we have, as I mentioned, Katie Palmer. And Katie has produced a video during lockdown. She hasn't been sitting, sitting back. She's produced this video called Something New. And as well as singing in it, she asked all her family and friends if they could contribute to it as well. Anything that they have taken up a new hobby, a new pastime during lockdown. And it's a very interesting video. You may see some people you know on it. So let's have Katie Palmer with her video, Something New. Times with 
Hello, well I made it back, I reached the summit, but oh, I think I pulled summit when I was up there, my legs are killing me, I'm obviously not as fit as I thought I was. So while I was up the mountain I met up with a group of people, friends that I haven't seen for a wee while, and we got chatting about this, that and the next thing, and invariably the topic of conversation was Covid and the mask. Who knew this piece of paper could invoke such passion in people? And while the group was 100% agreed that it's for our own safety and protection, they were very split on the good and bad points of the mask. And I'll share some of them with you because I thought some of them were quite funny and I hope you enjoy them as well. So the mask, when you've got the mask on, how do you know who you're talking to unless you know by their hairstyle, if they've got hair and the shape of their face? But if it's a nice sunny day and they're wearing sunglasses and a hat, it could be anybody. How many times have we probably passed by people in the street? Inadvertently, of course, because we didn't know who it was. The mask also has a bad point in that we don't know how people are feeling. 
When you look at the piece of people's face, you can tell whether they're having a good day or a bad day, whether they're happy or sad. But when the mask's on, you don't know how they're feeling because you can't see. You can't see if they're smiling and you can't see if they're sad. But it spares your blushes though. If somebody says something or if you say something inadvertently, you hide your blush with the mask, don't you? But I don't know about you, but I'm having a terrible problem with, with wearing the mask because when I've got the mask on and then my glasses are on the top, I can't see because it's all foggy. We'll need to get wee windscreen wipers. That'll be the next invention. Somebody will make a fortune from that. And then there's the quandary. Do you wear masks to suit your outfit? Because you can get different coloured masks, you know. So, do you have to get one to match your clothes? Or do you wear one to clash and become a fashion statement? And there's a thing. Do you know, it's also an aesthetic compliment, I've been told. Oh yes, this is the new chin uplift. Look, you put it on here and you tighten it up each night and it saves you a fortune in getting cosmetic surgery. But I've also heard they're bringing out new blind date again. Can you imagine that? So the person's got the mask on and if they're wearing a hat or glasses, oh my goodness, who knows what horror you'll end up with on that night and you won't know until you get home because they'll not be allowed to take their mask off. And then when you're in the supermarket as well and you're wearing the mask and you're shopping away quite the thing and somebody coughs or sneezes, oh, how dare you? You get the look, don't you? You're terrified to cough or sneeze in case anybody gives you the look. And not only do we have to take the mask to the supermarket, we now have to take one of these because you can't touch any products for fear of spreading your disease or if somebody else has, has got the disease. So you're having to use one of these to look for the best sell-by dates. What will it be next? Who knows? But anyway, that's just some of the things that we spoke about. And we have to live with COVID-19 and all the protection that we've got round about us because it is to keep us safe. But if it's getting you down, just remember all your favourite things and that will make you feel happy. Now that could be a cue for a song, couldn't it? I wonder what the song could be. I'll give you a minute to think about it, and then when I come back, I'll see if you've guessed what it is. So have you guessed what it is yet? Well done if you have. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens Brown paper packages tied up with strings These are a few of my favourite things Cream coloured ponies and crisp apple strudels Doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles Waggies and fly with the moon on their wings These are a few of my favourite things Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes Snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes Silver white winters and melt into spring Hello again, and welcome to another Friendly Hour quiz. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm finding it very hard to believe that we're at September already. The days are shorter, we're having to close the blinds earlier at night. The gardens are 
changing. Some of the leaves in the trees are beginning to turn. And the one thing that I don't like about September, the spiders have all decided to come indoors. Four last night. I'm not very good with them, but anyway, I managed to put them out. So, to this week's quiz. Now, it's quite easy, different from the last time. No like towards this time. What you're looking for is names, usually Christian names. So, I'll let you get settled, get your pen and paper ready, put your thinking cap on, be comfortable, and I'll be back in a couple of seconds with questions one and two. So here we go with question number one. It's an easy one to get started. that one. Give you a minute to write your answer down. Here we go with number two. So there's your first two, and I'll be back in just a minute with three and four. Okay, so here we go with number three. Just a wee bit trick here. Okay, number four. few seconds with number five and six. Right, so this is number five. Okay, 
Make that one down. And here we go with the last one. Number six. See how you get on, good luck, and I'll be back with you in a wee while with the answers. See you shortly. Thank you, Anne. Now, I don't know about you, but I did a lot of clearing out during lockdown. I got some drawers and some cupboards cleared out, and it was a great feeling getting all that done. And this next video of uh, Colin Henning playing Leaving Lismore uh, involves someone clearing out their attic. An old lady had died and her, her nephew had got the attic cleared out and he found a piece of sheet music and he sent it to this piano teacher who happens to be Colin's piano teacher and he transcribed the music and let a Colin play it. Colin had never heard it before and he sent it to me. Now it's an old Scottish folk song and it has been accredited to a few people but we did a bit of investigation. There's no biographical information about it. Both Anne and I were, by the end of the week, we were calling each other Hattie Wainthrop. And we've decided that it was a woman called Margaret Martin Hardy who wrote Leaving Lismore. And some of you may remember that Kenneth McKellar sang it, Leaving Lismore. It's a lovely song. But it is also discovered by Anne that it was a a hymn, it's been turned into a hymn, and it was set to words by a woman called Margaret McFarlane. And even that had a bit of debate about it. There's two women down um, accredited with that. And the hymn is Spirit of God Come Dwell Within Me, and it's a lovely hymn too. So I'll let you listen to it. We have no idea who the woman in the attic was. We'd love to find out. Colin's going to investigate more for us, and when we find out, we'll get back to you. But this next piece of music is Leaving Lismore, and we're going to give Margaret Martin Hardy the credit of writing it. Take it away, Colin. Thank you very much Colin, that was lovely and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you in future programmes. So you may remember over the last two programmes we've introduced a new segment called the Seven Word Challenge. And this challenge was to find out how your faith has been affected during lockdown. And we've had four people in the segments 
over the past two episodes and this week is no different. But if you'd like to get involved and give us your seven word challenge, please get in touch and we'll get that organised. So this week it's my pleasure to introduce giving their seven word challenge, Adam, Jennifer, Sadie and Jim. Challenging. Inspiring. Family. Hopeful. Trepidation. Anticipation. Speechless. Worry. Heartbreak. Longing. Surprised. Joy. Excitement. And loved. Frightening. Challenging. Surreal. Isolating. Upsetting. Distancing. And loneliness. Lockdown. Lifestyle. Or jobs. Care. Kindness. Disinfectant. Overcame. Weakness. Neighbourliness. As I'm sure you've noticed, it's quite a complicated world at the moment. We're doing all sorts of things we've never done before. So in the midst of all that, let's take a break. Switch off. Sit back. And enjoy a minute's peace. Look at the picture. Look at the word. Don't try and make sense of it. Just take it all in. You'll think about it later. Just look at it. Let yourself enjoy the beauty of it. The calmness of it. Here we are, just for you. Because you deserve it. Here's a minute's peace.
Okay, so I wonder how you did. Now, I think there was only one that was quite tricky. So I'll give you the answers and you can see how you got on. The first one was really easy. And the name you were looking for there was Sally. And that was a song I'm pretty sure was sung originally by Gracie Fields. Now, number two, I think was a Nat King Cole song. And the name was Mona Lisa. Number three was Annie's song. And that was, of course, by the late John Denver. Now, number four is the one I thought you might have a wee bit difficulty with. And it was Silla Black that recorded this. And one day I'll play the whole thing for you, because I really like it. And that one was called Alfie. Now, number five was from the film, I think. Meet me in St. Louis. Louis was the name you were looking for there. And I don't know if Judy Garland actually sang that song, but it was definitely, she was definitely in the film. And the last one, of course, was by the famous Danny Kaye. And that was three, one in the, the film, and it was Thumbelina. So there we go. So you had Sally, Mona Lisa, Annie's song, Alfie, Louie and Thumbelina. So I hope you've done well. Please let us know. I'll always like to know whether you've thought it was easy or too difficult or if you've got them right or not. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the fun and I'll have one again for you the next time. And in the meantime, I'd like to hand you over to Lynn for her reflection and we we'll look forward to hearing what Lynn's got to say to us. Hello, how are you doing? More importantly, how are you managing with the new normal? I mean, it gets it gets bandied about this word new normal. As we've said before, it's new, it's far from normal. However, I made quite a slow start because I was quite nervous because when you've been sheltering for months and you're being told that if you put a foot out the door you're breaking the law and bringing, you know, the plague down upon your own head, it makes you think, it really does. But anyway, you know, I'm okay with shops now. I can go into shops, get my own prescription. Marvellous. Um, but I've all, we've always liked going out for coffee a couple of times a week in the afternoon. And we've got our favourite places, which have all been closed up until quite recently. So, greatly daring, we decided to go for a Costa coffee. And, you know, it turned into much more than just that, because when we were in, this really nice guy said, uh, you'll have to be tracked and traced, you know. So I thought, fair enough. And I was about to give him my name and address, and he said, what kind of phone have you got? Is it smartphone? Is it analogue? Is it another word that I don't know? And I said to him, I have no idea, I just use it as a phone. So I had to show him my phone, and then we had to go onto the internet, then we had to photograph something on the counter. Then I had to put my details into the internet. And then we got our coffee. You know, novel experience. But it's the same everywhere. You know, um, actually in our other favourite place, you get a wee form to fill in as well before you get your coffee. But it's still nice, it's still good, and it's great actually to have even that wee bit of normality back. Okay, yes, they're quite right. It is a new normal. But it's quite acceptable. Other things. We've been away for a night. And it was great. The thing is, if you take precautions, you can do just about anything that you've been doing. I've booked up holidays for next year down at Lytham, our favourite place. And, fingers crossed, we will be completely normal by then. But if not, well, we'll just put our masks on. And we'll take our... our hand sanitizers with us and we'll just go and we'll just have a marvellous time and that's what it's about there is two words to it there is new and it is new we're in a different world now and I don't think some of it's ever going to return to what we used to call normal 
But also it's normal. We've got to get on with it. We've really just got to pick up where we left off, maybe in a different way. But we've really just got to do it now. We've just got to go out. I know the figures are going up at the moment, but it's still the same thing. Masks on for shops, crowded places, hands, absolutely vital, social distancing. You know, to begin with, mind you, you feel yourself kind of shrinking back from people, don't you? If they're just a bit too close. But you have to get over that as well. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, it's not over. I mean, the virus is still with us, as, as is perfectly obvious. But you know, we're greater than the virus. We're greater than anything that comes against us or tries to get in our way, which we've been saying all the way along. Obstacles are for finding a way around. And here's another one. So, what can we say? Girls, get your lipstick on, get your earrings on, get your high heels back on, and get out there. Life's for the living. Boys, whatever it is you do to show the world you're still a force to be reckoned with, you do that as well. And you get back out there too. And one way or another, we'll actually start getting used to things the way they are now. And we'll start living our lives again. We'll have to be a bit careful, but we've always had to be careful. Life is not without risk. Think back on all the things you've been through so far. I mean, I can think back and I can think of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I can think back on all the terrorism of the 70s. You know, all the bomb threats. Um, all manner of things and all manner of things have always come against us. But we're here. We're still here. Hopefully we'll be here for a long time. Get back out there. As I've said, it's for the living. There's no point in hibernating because it goes by very, very quickly. So, high heels on. Boys, whatever it is you want to do. And I hope to see you out there. Getting tracked and traced along with me. Let's enjoy yourself. Hope to see you next time. Hello again. And can I just thank Lynn for her, as always, wise words. Now, I've got a poem for you that I think is very up for the show and what we're talking about and generally where we are at the moment in our lives. I think the quote that Shirley gave at the top of the show says it all really. It's life, folks, but not as we know it. I think that's how pretty much how we're all feeling at the minute. Now this poem is called Focus on Your Blessings. And the lady that wrote it was going through a very tough time when she wrote it. Let me just quote something that she said. Whilst it can be all consuming to have problems or to feel that you don't have the life that you want to have. Having the focus on what's lacking isn't great for the soul. And she asks a question. Do you struggle to focus on the positives? Do you count your blessings daily? Or do your problems consume you and prevent you from seeing the good? So here's the poem. Focus on Your Blessings by M. S. Moore. Sometimes life is tricky. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes you feel out of place or like you don't belong. Sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes you might feel scared, but focus on the positives. If you seek them, they'll be there. If your brain won't stop worrying and you can't sleep at night, step out of the darkness and look into the light. The bad things won't vanish, but don't let them consume. It just makes you miserable 
and intensifies the gloom. So, focus on your blessings and let them shine through. Don't let the negatives be what defines you. Now, when I was looking for a sing-along song for this show, there was only really one that we could pick and we're going to finish with it. So, have a couple of coughs and get ready to sing because the sing-along song is Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Well, folks, that's it. The party's over. We hope you enjoyed it. On behalf of Karen, Anne, Lynn and myself, I'd like to thank everyone for taking part. I'd like to thank Katie for her lovely video. I'd like to thank Colin for his beautiful piano playing. I'd like to thank the four who took part in the Seven Word Challenge. That's Jim, Sadie, Jennifer and Adam. And also... Very important people, the VIPs of the show, yourselves. We thank you very much for tuning in. And we really appreciate it. I know people wouldn't miss it every second Wednesday. In fact, some people have asked if we can do it every Wednesday. It would kill us to do it every Wednesday. It takes a, it takes a lot out of us. But we thoroughly enjoy it. And we hope you do too. And remember, you can catch us on YouTube if you've missed it. Now, there's a service on. This Sunday and every Sunday at 11 o'clock, the Muir Relief Parish Church service online. And we will be back next Wednesday, the 23rd of September. That's two weeks today. We hope you can join us then. Now, I'd like to quote from Charles Dickens as we leave you. And the quote is, Reflect upon your present blessings, of which every man has many, not on your past misfortunes, of which all men have some. Until the next time, hope you keep well. See you then. Bye-bye.